Welcome to Carolyn's Sunday School class. Good morning, class. The, today is Pentecost Sunday. And so um, today we're going to take a break from our lessons with Moses and Pharaoh in Egypt and jump ahead to when they were the children of Israel were with Moses in the wilderness. Okay, and for the sake of our story today, um, this is going to be Moses. But before we, this guy here. For the sake of, um, before we get into this story, um, we want to um, look a little bit at what this um, Feast of the Lord is supposed to be about. In Leviticus 23, 17, 15 through 17, um, God tells Moses that they need to count 50 days, that's seven weeks and one day after the Sabbath from the Feast of First Fruits, which is the resurrection. We celebrate today, um, and the Jews celebrated it on the 29th, which was the evening of Thursday over to Friday. And it depends when you begin the count. Okay, so um, part of the celebration um, included waving two loaves of bread like this. Um, last year, if you recall, I brought you lo um, fresh made loaves of, of bread to share. But since this is being done virtually, then I'm just showing you a picture. But they would wave them and praise to the Lord for the harvest. Another name for this holiday was the Feast of Harvest, as explained in Exodus, Exodus 23. Okay, so although it doesn't specify in the scripture, it's widely believed that this is the day um, when God came down on Mount Sinai to give the Israelites the, the law through Moses. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we'll go to Exodus 19. And it says in the beginning of Exodus 19 that it was in the third month, so it wasn't the end of it, it was somewhere in the beginning, in the middle of the third month after they had come out of um, Egypt, that they came to the wilderness of Sinai. Now Sinai has a little word S-I-N at the beginning of it, and that is pronounced Sin, and that is the moon god. So actually this mountain, Mount Sinai and the wilderness surrounding it were actually dedicated to the moon god. And, um, and Yahweh God, the creator, the, the one and only most all-powerful God, the most high, was taking charge of it. It's like he was saying to the unseen realm, he was saying to this entity that claimed to be the moon god, get out of here, the whole earth is mine, and this mountain is mine. And so um, they, um, the Lord led them, and led Moses back to this mountain. This was the same place that God had spoken to Moses through the burning bush. Okay, now let's look at verses 3 through 6. It says, And Moses went up to God. So up he goes, up on the mountain, to talk to God. And while he was up there, um, Yahweh spoke to, to him. If it's, you see in your Bible, it says, to um, The Lord called out to him. You know, notice that the Lord is in all capital letters. That's translated from Yahweh. Um, so um, the Lord spoke to him and he said, You saw what I did to the Egyptians with all the plagues to bring them out. And you saw that I bore you out of Egypt on eagle's wings. In other words, I carried you out safely. And I brought you to myself. He says, I brought you to myself here. And then he says, If you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you will be a special treasure to me among all the nations of the earth and you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which you shall speak to the children of israel so down comes moses and, da, 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 and he talks to all the people and he explains it to them and they said yes whatever yahweh has spoken that we will do and then so then up moses goes again saying yeah um lord god they said they will do everything you said and so um, he says, okay, go back down and consecrate them. That means get them ready, separate them, tell them to wash their clothes today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will come down on the mountain and make sure that you set boundaries. So in other words, this was, um, I don't know how well you can see it. Um, here is the mountain and here are the people. And you see that there's a space between the mountain and the people. So make sure you set boundaries that they do not go up or touch it. Because if any animal or person were to touch the base of the mountain, 
they would have to be put to death. And the reason for that is that Yahweh is ex helping to explain to them and demonstrating to them that he is holy, that everything that he touches is holy, it's separate, it's sacred, and nothing sinful, nothing impure can touch it. And, and your heart has to be right. You can't just go up and touch it. And so he's explaining to them that he is holy. So Moses came down the mountain and he explained to the people all of this. He sanctified them. He had them wash their clothes. And they had to prepare and be clean to meet God. And so now we're going to um, see what happened next. Okay. Just a minute, boys and girls, young people and old. All right. So it says that God came down to the, whoops, wait a minute, wait. We've got to have a cloud first. So there was all the thunder and the lightning, and the Bible says that God came down in fire. He came down in fire, and the thunder and the lightning, and the people were so afraid of what was going on. He came down with a louder blast of the trumpet. Okay, so there, there we have God in the mountain. God came down, and um, he called Moses back up. Now, this was a scary thing. The people, I mean, if you were next to the mountain and all of that started happening, you would be so, so shocked, and they were. They were, like, trembling. and like, What's going on? What's going on? This, the, the, yeah, yeah. Get God away from us. We can't handle this. They were so afraid. In verses 20 to 23, Yahweh called Moses up and up he went again. And then he told him, you know, go back down and make sure the people know that they can't come close. And, and he said, well, I already told them. He said, go and tell them anyway. So it's very important to be consecrated and clean before approaching God. That's what the message was that he had, he was un making them understand so washing their clothes was an outward sign of being clean and holy before the Lord. Uh, they had to be obedient, and we have to be obedient as well. We must be cleansed by the blood of, of Jesus Christ. So that was a picture um, that you had to be clean before coming to God. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9, he tells us there... Um, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. And so we have to be clean and have a repentant heart when we come to the Lord. And, and the, that was what God was showing them it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that's very important. And so the people had to learn that there is a separation between them and God, and they could not approach him unless they were clean. So um, Moses came down and told them all about this, and then that was when the Ten Commandments were given. God started telling them the Ten Commandments, and he was speaking out of the cloud, and it was a big booming voice, and... And they heard the voice. They heard the sound. Some of the Jewish teachers, uh, rabbis, have taught that actually all of the people heard them, heard God speaking to them in their own languages. Um, I don't know if that's true. It's a tradition of the elders. It's possible. Okay. So um, then because the people were so frightened, they told Moses, you know what? You talk to God. And you let God talk to you and you talk to us. We'll tell you and you talk to God. Um, because if, if God speaks to us, we are going to die. And 
we can't hear this. And Moses says, don't fear. God has come to test you. I want you to look at this verse in chapter 20, um, towards the end of the chapter, verse um, 20. Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. So it is very important for us to fear the Lord. He is God Almighty. He is all-powerful. We, we're nothing before him, and we need to realize, we need to have a certain fear of him so that we are afraid to sin, so that we, like, I don't want to sin because I don't want to offend God. Um, just like um, parents that have taught their children right and wrong and have taught their children, um, you know, I'm sure that as young people, you've been disciplined by your parents, and so then there may have been some things that you were tempted to do, but you said, no, I better not because I don't want to get in trouble with my mom. Well, that's a healthy fear of your parents, and that's the kind of fear we need to have with God so that it will help to keep us from sin. Okay, now let's go to Acts 2. We'll go ahead and turn off our cloud. Let's go ahead and fast forward about 1,500 years. And we'll go to Acts chapter 2. By this time, Jesus has raised from the dead, and he has ascended up into heaven. And he, he told the disciples, just before he went up into heaven, he said, um, don't go out and do anything just yet. You need to hang out here in Jerusalem, tarry until you receive the promise of the Father. Um, he, it will come, but you need to wait. Now, you understand that Jesus had breathed on these disciples right after he rose from the dead and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So they, they were already born again, but he is telling them, wait till you receive the promise of the Father. And so um, we look at verse 1. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So you understand this Pentecost is the same as the Feast of Weeks. In the Old Testament, it was often called the Feast of Weeks because they counted seven weeks. In Hebrew, that's Shavuot. And they just translated that into Greek, which was Pentecost. And so it's the same thing. And so they've been celebrating this since, since the time of Moses. They had been celebrating the Feast of Weeks and, and the Harvest Festival and celebrating um, the giving of the law. They'd been celebrating it, and so now it had fully come. They had counted the 50 days, and this was the day. Um, Jesus um, ascended on high on the 40th day after his resurrection and now there were 10 days that they were spent they spent seeking God and that's why I've been encouraging people to try to seek God during these last 10 days and today here we the day of Pentecost has fully come and then it says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind I should have well, maybe you can hear the fan, and it's not very loud or very rushing, but there was a big wind. They were all together in one place. They were probably praying and worshiping God, praising Him, seeking Him. They, they had obeyed Him. They stayed where they were supposed to be, and they were in the upper room. There were about 120 of them. And verse 2 says, Suddenly a sound came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house and where they were all sitting. Then, then there appeared on them um, tongues of fire. Tongues, it says, as of fire, and one sat on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so all of a sudden, they had celebrated, they'd probably celebrated this festival all their lives. And yet, this was the first time that, that there was a manifestation of God's presence and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And then right afterwards, there were people outside that were wondering, what in the world's going on in there? They heard the sound, and they heard the voices. Maybe the windows were open. And they came around, and, and they're like, wow, I hear them speaking in my own language. Because these people, people were, all the Jews were commanded to come to Jerusalem three times a year, and this was the second time. And so many of them would come for Passover, which was the first time. And they would stay the, the about two months or so. 
until the Feast of Pentecost because they often came from a long ways away. And so they were, they were milling around. They were all there, and they heard this, um, this sound. They heard the sound, and they heard it in their own language. And then Peter explained and preached to them um, what it meant and preached to them salvation through Jesus Christ. So what I want to show you now, I want to just real quickly compare and contrast the two events because there are some similarities and there are some differences. And so if you just hang on to your hats just a minute. Let's see if I can get this where you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. But I thought I would do this. I tried this today. Okay. So we want... Whoa. So, um, in Exodus... In Exodus 19, um, we see that the law or the Torah was given. Now, the law, we tend to think of it as, oh, a very oppressive thing. But when you get a game, if you don't have the rules behind it, you probably won't play the game. Because a, a game is no fun unless you know the right rules. And life is no fun unless we know the rules that God has given. So the loving instruction of the Father is what is meant by the law or the Torah. In Acts 2, the Holy Spirit is given to empower believers. Putting the law in our hearts and giving us the strength and the ability with the Holy, power of the Holy Spirit to actually be able to live the law. Um, in Exodus 19, the validity of the law was confirmed by the fire from heaven. In other words, the people really believed that this was God speaking to them and this law that God was about to give them came from him because they saw all of the stuff. It, it, in other words, Moses didn't just come up one day and say... Moses didn't just come up one day and say to them, oh, here's, here's the book of the law that God gave me. They might not have believed him, but because they saw the signs and wonders in, on the mountain, the signs and wonders on the mountain, then they, um, they believed it. It was confirmed. In Acts 2, the validity of the Holy Spirit's ministry was confirmed by the tongues of fire. So they heard... Um, the, the tongues of fire sat on their head, and so they, they recognized that this was, um, that this, that this was um, a real thing. This was um, a valid thing. The people were sanctified and made ready. They had, that's my dog. She's excited about some, some vehicle outside. Um, but the people were sanctified. They were made ready, and they had their clothes clean. In order to receive from God that day. In Acts chapter 2. They were waiting and expecting from God. They were re made ready by salvation. They had received the Holy Spirit before. They had also made ready by prayer and fasting. And spending time before the Lord. And so they were ready to receive. What God had for them that day. Um, number 4. Yahweh descended on a mountain. Yahweh is um, like a pre-incarnation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Jesus. So he's the second person of the Trinity, and he's the one that came down. In Acts, it was the Holy Spirit that came into the upper room. So what was the same is coming to a high place, the, the mountain and an upper room. But the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. So it's God. God appeared on the mountain. And it, that was that was Yahweh, and God appeared in the upper room as the the Holy Spirit. Okay, now when Yahweh came down on the mountain, he came with thunder and lightning, a thick cloud and fire, and a loud sound of a trumpet. That's kind of a preview of the second coming when he comes back in the clouds, and he comes on Mount Olives, and he splits it open. It's going to be a loud sound. There's going to be. Um, uh, a lot of fireworks there too. And so this was a, like a preview of that. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came with a loud sound of a rushing mighty wind. Now in, in Greek, Holy Spirit is hagios pneuma, which 
means like a holy breath. Pneuma, we get the word pneumonia, pneuma having breath and um, from that same word. So is the holy breath or the holy wind. It, in Hebrew, it's ruach kadosh. And it literally means holy, they both literally mean holy breath or wind. So when they heard the sound of a rushing mighty wind, it was literally the Holy Spirit manifesting as what he was, a holy breath, a holy wind. And he manifested himself as that. I just realized that this, um, as I was studying that, I go, wow, that's really cool. Okay, number six, the people were at a distance and they were fearful. They were not allowed to approach a holy God. They had to stand at a distance. There had to be a space. There had to be Moses going back and forth between them and God because they, they were not prepared to be in the presence of a holy God. But in Acts, the people were amazed and perplexed by the sound they, and the sound they heard and the, and the tongues and the speak, hearing in their own languages. And they were invited to know Yeshua Jesus because that was after Jesus had died to pay the price so that we could come directly into God's presence. So the people that were outside were invited to come to Jesus Christ. They were not kept at a distance. Um, Moses explained the law how to please Yahweh, and how to obtain forgiveness through many sacrifices. So Moses explained it to them. Moses was their teacher, and he explained to them how they could get to know God. After this event in Acts, Peter explained the way of salvation and forgiveness through Jesus Christ and his one-time sacrifice on the cross. There had to be no more sacrifices made for sin, and Peter explained to them how they could be saved. And over three, about 3,000 people were saved that day. So I want to um, bring this to a close. And number one, if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, maybe you're like one of the people and, and you, you've heard about God. Maybe you've seen something that is like, really, you don't know if that's God or not, or God speaking to you through his word. Or maybe you've heard God's voice as you've listened to this. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. He already, he was the sacrifice for sins. He was the one that took your place on the cross. And he opened up the Holy of Holies so that you could approach him. That you could come directly into his presence. All you have to do is come and repent and receive that free gift today. If you've already done that and you're already born again then this would be a time to, to receive more from God and ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit and, and to, um, to work through you and give you the boldness. These disciples were not bold before this event. Peter was so shy before this. He, and, and, well, he wasn't shy in his personality, but he was, he was easily frightened. But now he is so bold to preach the word of God. And if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've not received that infilling and that that um, empowering of the Holy Spirit. Today is the day to do it. Many believe that since we experience Passover, hunkered down in our homes, be, um, waiting for a pestilence to pass over us this year, that likewise there will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit this year, today, on Pentecost Sunday. And so today is the day for you to seek the Lord, whether to know him as your Lord and Savior or to receive that empowerment from on high, just like the disciples did. And so um, I want to close with that. And uh, let's go ahead and close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for the young people and anybody else that may have listened to this lesson today. I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to them and help them to recognize how much they need you. If they're not born again, I pray that they would seek your face to receive you as Savior. And if they have been born again, I pray that they would seek the, the filling of the Holy Spirit, that, that empowerment of the Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Goodbye, guys. Have a, have a wonderful Pentecost Sunday.